I'm now standing in the galley looking at the chart table uh, over to starboard and uh, there's a nice book cabinet that uh, kind of finishes out the chart table. There's a vent down the bottom there which is for the uh, S-bar heating system drawer under there. Um, I call it the chart table but actually over the years it's evolved and become more an office and comm center and weather analysis center than a chart table because we strongly believe in having all the navigation on deck and you could see that in a previous deck video we did. It's the panel and um, in the middle there there's an AAS alarm uh, which will wake the dead. And it's programmed specifically if somebody goes overboard with a uh, AAS personal overboard beacon on and it's programmed for our beacons and uh, I really recommend getting one of these things uh, if you're going to go the AAS beacon way route, which we are huge believers in. We navigate primarily on uh, this uh, Apple Air runs our navigation software, but it actually runs Windows, which I know sounds crazy, but actually uh, we discovered that this Air was probably the best Windows computer we could buy. Uh, more on that on the site. There's an old VHF radio there. That's our backup VHF radio, and it's uh, it's wired to an antenna on the radar stand. So if you dump the mast, um, heaven forbid, you still have a VHF radio. And uh, then the command mic goes to the main VHF radio, which is a modern DSC uh, up on deck. But you can also control it from here. You can also see what the wind speed and that sort of thing is. Um, we do, if we heave to in a gale, um, we'll sit down here uh, often out of the weather and misery and uh, you know, put out a security call every 30 minutes and stick our head out regularly and also check, uh, check for things on this. Uh, we've got a radar repeater um, that's off the main um, 1835, sorry, 1830 commercial radar on deck. I uh, can't say this repeater is wonderful uh, but it does work, and it was the best technology available at the time. Um, single sideband radio um, to an automated tuner, uh, which is what you need if you want a good signal. That said, I don't remember the last time I used uh, SSB or radio. Um, I'm not a chatty person on the radio, so and I found that this little gadget, the Iridium Go, is way more useful for getting weather information and easier and everything else than messing with Pacator modems and all that performance. Uh, here's a nice little tuck just for papers and files, keeps things organized. Classic. Uh, you can lift this and get underneath, although with the computer there, the clearance is low. That computer can be swung out if you want to use it here, or you can use another computer on top here, which is what I normally do when I'm writing or working. And uh, we, could, uh, we could hide all this wiring and uh, be easy enough to do, but I'm actually not a believer in trying to make wiring too hidden because it just gets to be a pain when you want to um, change something. And this is all the wiring for computers, etc. cetera. Um, here's a cell phone amplifier. It's the antenna for it's up here, which gives you a little cell phone hotspot that amplifies and we frequently have cell phone and full data coverage 25 miles offshore with that and the cell phone when i'm not using it for videos goes in here and charges and uh this box here converts uh, 182 to um so the inputs for the computer and uh this is kind of well, getting rid of my notes here this is kind of nice nice it's a it's a versa uh, mount for a big screen. Uh, I haven't used it lately, but when we were living on the boat a lot, it, it was nice to have a big screen right there and it would swing out and be about here. And so it makes a nice office screen. It could be unscrewed and got rid of. It's not, doesn't have to be there. And this is part of retaining it and stuff, retaining the screen that was once there. But, and you know, we got lots of little nice tucks for pencils and uh, all of that kind of thing here. Uh, and here in the corner is a heart tank tender, and that has just been great. It's 30 years old, old as the boat, and heart rebuilt it for us once, and it accurately measures how much fuel uh, water we have, 
um, and it just it, you know it's just reliable and it just works and uh, that's the charging plug for the computer So I've now uh, stepped into the engine room corridor to uh, give you a little uh, perspective. And uh, we added this uh, particular bookcase. It was, it was a kind of a distance to fall across there regu before. And so we thought, well, we can both use up, get some more space for storage and make it safer. So you can see now it's very safe between that one and the other bookcase, the other side and lockers, the other side. And uh, there's just a ton of room in here, um, books. Uh, that's my sextant there. Uh, there's a Bosons bag down there, a paper for the printer. Um, we actually have had a printer up on top there where my hat is in the past when we've, when we've needed a printer, although that becomes less and less uh, useful nowadays. And in that tuck there, there's... Um, uh, zoom in on that. There's flashlights and uh, oh, um, ear defenders. So we check the engine every hour when it's running, and so we uh, we do that. And up there, there's the binoculars and storage for more things. You could also if you want another electronic gadget. I guess it could go up in there. Now back standing in the galley, and that's the back of the other bookcase, and it's got. Oh, a couple of places to put a, a couple of glasses of water. You know, it's nice to nice to have a glass of water right at the companion way. Um, that's uh, for my homemade salad dressing there. And what do we got? Egg cups. You know, it's just all everything has a place and everything in its place, unless of course I've been around, in which case Phyllis has to put it back for me. And uh, spices, more spices down here. And uh, you'll see you'll see where we keep a lot of spices in a minute. And then down here underneath that is kind of ready use for the cockpit. It's we're right at the uh, bottom of the companionway stairs, and uh, there are odd things like gloves and a big spotlight and uh, spare air canisters. Um, here's a we have full Solus rockets and flares in a container under the companionway steps, but we keep one right here ready to go and uh it's it's what we call our ship scarer never had to use it but if a ship gets too close and we're in absolute desperation um maybe fire one of these off you've never seen fireworks until you've seen one of these go off and uh, you get extra points by the way if you get it through one of the bridge windows before we leave the chart table area um here's the uh hanging locker it's actually more in i guess the engine room corridor or the corridor to the aft cabin but i just want to show you this because it just shows uh, again the benefits of having a bigger boat but not cramming too many cabins and things into it um so let's just look in here and you'll see what i mean um most foul weather gear lockers in most boats are kind of a joke in my uh, in my experience they just don't hold enough uh, that's two full sets of ocean foul weather gear, the really heavy stuff, Phyllis is in mine. And then there are four uh, spin lock life jackets in there. And there's still room for two more sets of, uh, of foul weather gear. And we also keep our uh, Gore-Tex for hiking in here. So even when you have four people aboard um, in a northern expedition where heavy clothes are required, everything for all four go in here. And then if you look down here, I can pull this out of the way a bit. You can just see that there are, I think, five set, uh, three sets of boots right now in there. And uh, there, um, and you can get two more sets in there. So again, uh, it, you can have everybody's boots in one place. Now if I back off a bit, you see where it is in relation to the engine room uh, workbench and uh, the chart table. So the cool thing is that when you go on watch and come off watch, you change you change um, in the uh, corridor going back to the aft cabin. And the nice thing about that is you don't uh, bother anybody either sleeping in the salon or in the aft cabin. That door can be closed and you can turn a light on if you need to see what you're doing, although that is a 
that has a red light on it, so better to red light if you're going on watch. And um, you're in a you're in a constrained area uh, between the engine room doors and the workbench, so you, don't, you there's no chance of falling when you're trying to get your boots off or something like that, or put on bib overalls, and you can just sit on the workbench there too. And of course, if you're dripping um, salt water, etc., you come below and it's being nasty then it's all constrained back here where it won't do any damage. So this, this works really well. And you can, there's no, there's no switches here to bang up against. Um, I've, seen, uh, I've seen people try and change on a boat next to the switch panel and uh, you know bang into a switch and turn something off critical like the autopilot. I'm now looking at the companionway ladder. It's uh, four steps, uh, great handholds. There's a bar across here hand holes on each side Stutter. and that has all of our flares and rockets in it nice and convenient on the side of the companion way we have all kinds of cool stuff which i'll just uh, run you through quickly uh, at the top we have a, one of these little electric it's up it's just a household barometer but it's got a sensor on the radar stand uh, so it's kind of fun because you can read the temperature outside before you decide what you're going to dress in and uh, also the temperature inside uh, that's the control for the inverter. Coming down, we have a little pocket here for a uh, rescue beacon that we carry hiking in remote places when we're out of cell phone range. One of the four halotron and one uh, uh, dry powder extinguishers on the boat. And that one's nice and convenient from the companionway. There's also one in the lazarette, so if you get trapped outside the boat, uh, you can get to that a battery measurement system. It's a couple of Victrons. You can read about those on the site. Uh, this is important for an aluminum boat. Uh, just uh, two greens, we're good. What that shows is the electrical system has maintained uh, isolation from the hull, and that's absolutely vital in an aluminum boat. In fact, if you do that, that one thing with an aluminum boat, um, you probably, all the other horror stories they tell you, you know, penny dropped in the bilge, all that rubbish, uh, none of that really applies. It's all you gotta do is be careful with electricity, with aluminum, and that's actually comparatively easy to do. And um, I have a complete set of uh, articles on how to take care of an aluminum boat, which I'll link to in the show notes. Uh, these are just more breakers that we added for various things. They're double breakers. Uh, because again, on an aluminum boat, if you do get a short on the negative side to the hull, it's easier to troubleshoot if you have a double breaker because you can just turn them off, wait until, say, this light had gone red, uh, which would indicate a leak to the hull. You can just turn those breakers off, and it would, um, when it went out, you'd know you had the one with the problem way. I wish all the breakers on the boat were that way, but they're they're not. Uh, some of them are singles, so there's a little bit more fun involved in troubleshooting. Without, that's a bilge, bilge alarm. Well, it will wake the dead. And uh, below that, water and the fuel. Uh, we're big believers in really monitoring stuff like this. That's the generator panel. And uh, below that is the fire, nuke fire control system panel, uh, which contains a box that's uh, wired to the main engine, the blowers, and the generator. So if the fire control system discharges in the engine room and floods the engine room with fire retardant gas, uh, those three devices shut down because uh, diesel engines are capable of running on fire retardant. So if they suck up the fire retardant, then you get a fire flashback. And that's actually required for um, ABYC and for all commercial that you have this ability. And the reason, of course, that the control box is outside of the engine room is because it wouldn't make a lot of sense to have it inside the engine room where it would get fried, would it? Here you've got the manual pull for the uh, fire extinguisher is also automatic. And above that, there's a switch that controls. We have a Wabasco heater that is, aside from the uh, S-bar heater, we also have a Wabasco that is plumbed into the engine heat exchanger. So you end up with free heat when the main engine's running. This is uh, this is kind of fire central. Uh, this little box here has a gas mask, one use gas mask, smoke mask, and some fire uh, resistant gloves in it. Um, 
because uh, you know if you do get in a situation where you're trying to deal with a fire, um, smoke is what's going to get you very quickly if you if you can't get a mask on. So that's right there. Of course, you could get trapped on deck. So there's also one of these in the lazarette.